So let's get started. Um, my name is Joy Long. Today I'm going to present the dynamic mechanical analysis of FG beams with different boundary conditions by BSC. My supervisor is uh, Professor Vega and Kangal. In this presentation, I will first give a brief introduction about FGMs. Then I will talk about the DS method, which is the numerical method I'm going to use in my uh, thesis. Then I will going to talk about the governing equation of the function of weight to Moschenko beam. And after that, I will talk about uh, a numerical example and I will give some discussion. At the end of this presentation, I will give a conclusion. So, what is FGMs? FGMs stand for function of weight material. And the main characteristic of this material is that it can provide smooth and continuous variation of the material property in the desired direction. And due to its special property, the function of weighting material have a wide range of applications, such as in aerospace structure, nuclear infrastructure, and library structure, which is very popular in the field of civil engineering. So it is very important to understand the static and dynamic response of the functionally weighted structures. So the aim of this thesis is to analyze the free vibration response of functional equated beams and to study the effect of the geometry property and the material distribution on the natural figures part of the functional equated beams and to investigate the effectiveness of the DSC method in analyzing the vibration response of functional equated beams. So what is DSC method and why I'm going to use DSC method rather than other numerical method in my thesis? So DSC stands for discrete singular convolution, and it is a um, novel numerical method. So why I'm going to use DSC? Because the superiority of DSC is that it can combine the high frequency of the global method as well as the extraordinary flexibility of the local method. And the DSC method has been applied to so far many um, static and dynamic uh, problems for many structure successfully. So it is one of the best candidates to um, apply into so called the uh, uh, free vibration problem of the function of weight beam. And how does this matter work? So the following uh, formula is the fundamental formula for the DSC, uh, DSC. As you can see, the end derivative of a function at point i can be approximated by the summation on the right hand side, which is the uh, delta n, delta n stands for the DSC kernel, and f, uh, and f is the function value itself, and the summation is, uh, is from minus m to m, so it means that summation is uh, to sum the point uh, at and around point xi. And this formula can be really uh, easy to be written in a matrix form, and therefore it can very easy to program into MATLAB. For example, if we want to calculate the uh, displacement, transverse displacement, and of the transverse displacement at port i, we can write it in this form. So in this formula, dn stands for the n order of DSC coefficient matrix, and w stands for the uh, displacement vector. So now I'm going to talk about the governing equation of the function equated to Shankar beam, and how I solve for this um, Equations. So in this equation, there's three variables, u, w, and theta. This stands for the axial, transverse, and rotational displacement. On the left hand side of this equation, it contains some um, stiffness material property of the beam. 
And on the right hand side of this equation, it contains uh, I. I is the, the moment of inertial parameter of spin. And omega, omega is the natural frequency parameter, and this is the value we want to um, solve for. Then, on the left hand side of this equation, it also contains the first and second derivative of the transverse dis uh, on the displacement. So, as mentioned before, we can use the DSC method to approximate this uh, derivative. By doing so, the left hand side equation, uh, the left hand side can be approximated by um, the matrix form like this. So the T matrix is the uh, DSC coefficient matrix we have considered the material property uh, parameter on the left hand side of the equation. And Y stands for the um, displacement matrix. It's contained the U, W, and theta. On the right hand side of the equation, um, still it can be write, written in the matrix form. And the matrix M stands for the uh, moment of inertial matrix. By rearrange of this equation, we can write in this form, and we can solve this equation by using the eigenvalue solver, and we can get an omega. So now I'm going to talk about a numerical example. So in this example, the beam is a functional gradient to mechanical beam, and with a material distribution factor of one. So N stands for the material distribution factor. The beam is have a time clamp condition, and the boundary condition for a time clamp condition is the S0 transverse and the rotational displacement is all equal to zero at the support. And the geometry property and the material property is given as follows. Because the, most of the functional operating material is composed of ceramic and metal, so the subscript of C stands for the material property of ceramic, and the subscript of M stands for the material property of metal. And the, material, uh, and the variation of the material property can be approximated by using the power law. So on the Bottom right corner, it is, uh, this is the bottom. Uh, this is the power law. Um, for a beam like this, uh, uh, this is so the material proper, uh, the elastic modulus variation in the depth direction of the beam. And as you can see, when n equal to zero, there is no variation in the elastic modulus. And when n equal to one, there is a linear um, variation of the material property. Similarly. The variation of the material density can be also approximated by using the power law. So here is the numerical result. Uh, in this graph, I solved the convergences of the first three mole natural frequency parameters. So as you can see, with only 40 points, only uh, the, uh, the S, X axis stands for the um, number of grid points. With only 40 points, the calculation has uh, the result has been converged. So that means the DSC method is very efficient. And I also com uh, compare this uh, result with the one in literature, which is by the Chisipas method. But I didn't show it uh, in this presentation because of the time machine. But with only 40 grid point, the maximum error is only 0.55%. Then we can also plot the most shape of the uh, Timoshenko beam with a material distribution factor of 1. So this is the trans uh, first motion of the transverse displacement. This is second motion. This is third. We can also make use of the motion to check for the boundary condition. For example, at the left support and the right support, there is um, no transverse displacement. So the transverse displacement is equal to 0. Similarly, we can also plot the uh, uh, SU motion. This is mode 1. This is mode 2 and this is mode 3 and similarly we can also check for the boundary condition and the rotation of displacement this is mode 1, this is mode 2 and this is mode 3 and we can also check for uh, the boundary condition by using the mode shape then I also investigate the effect of the thickness to length ratio on the omega so in this figure um, the x-axis is the thickness to, uh, uh, to length ratio, and the y-axis is the number of uh, is the value of the natural frequency parameter. As you can see, a larger H2L ratio tends to cause a lower uh, natural frequency parameter in all cases. But as you can see, the H2L ratio have a larger effect on the higher mode than the lower mode, especially for the first mode. Uh, is the effect of H2L ratio is minimum. So, 
I also studied the uh, effect of the material distribution factor on the x-axis. I showed the uh, um, material distribution factor from 1 to 5. And, then, uh, and on the y-axis is the value of the fundamental uh, frequency parameters. So a higher, natural, uh, a higher material distribution factor tends to cause a lower uh, fundamental frequency. So to conclude, DSC method is a highly accurate and efficient method in analyzing the free vibration response of functional gradient beams. And a large uh, H2L ratio tends to cause a lower value of uh, omega for the time time um, functional gradient beam. And a larger N will lead to a lower value of um, omega for the time time functional gradient beam. So this is the end of my presentation. And this, um, this is some reference. Thank you. Okay, any questions? I have some questions. Yeah. Um, can you go to one of your results? Um, because what I'm, uh, I think you did a convergence. Yeah, this one? Yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, do you have any other methods to compare it with? I compare this one with the literature. It didn't, uh, it's doing by another numerical method. Mm -hmm. It's for the cheese, 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 okay. cheese, cheese method. And yeah. why you don't plot it here? Yeah, because I think the equilibrium of this method is more important. Like uh, when I first did the uh, PPT, I plot it with uh, plot the reality error with the like I plot the reality error with different grid point. But I think uh, in this form is. Um, this form can um, show the convergences of the natural frequency parameter more clearly than the relative error. Yes. And I compared this um, the relative error with the convert value for the uh, for 40 grade point and the error is only 0.55% uh, for the both three. And N is the number of elements? It's number of grade points. Yes, so we just describe the beam in the transverse direction. You actually only forty minutes. And how long? How long is it? Yeah, how long does it take? How long is the beam, or uh, how thick is the beam? Like you are doing some analysis, uh, numerical. Yeah. On the numerical. Yeah. So, uh, how long does the analysis take? Uh, how long is the analysis? Yeah. It's within a second. So it's like less than a second. So if I uh, increase the grid power to like 500, it's only take one second, less than two seconds. But the results is very accurate. It's almost the same with the literatures. So for the Albert's question, so you are using the host code or you use the commercial for that? I use the MATLAB to do that. Uh, MATLAB to yeah. do that. Okay. Uh, say this way, uh, I don't know the, you know the dimensions of your, of your example. Uh, so our experience actually um, uh, can, could be you know, useful for your, your reference. Yeah. So in the past year, we have students who use the, the, uh, the strength seven yeah. and uh, the ANSYS. Right. And uh, use the strength seven and ANSYS you know, because for the commercial software, we, we cannot touch the, the code. Mm -hmm. But uh, for ANSYS, it's more powerful. Mm -hmm. Once it's more powerful, what will I say that? Because uh, behind of the, you know, actually that like the black box, so behind of the you know the the, the, the interface showing you, actually they have the, the so-called optimized you know, program, and they try to give you the you know, you know the correct answer. Say this way, if you have the beam, you you divide it to one element, two elements, and three elements, and the answers will give you the same results. But if you use the strand seven, we will give you the, the quite different results. And if you increase the number. Uh, we know for the flat natural element analysis, you know, if you increase the number, doesn't mean uh, you know, the, the, the answers will be changing. Actually, we will approach it to the so-called exact solution and then apart from the so-called exact solution. So that doesn't mean uh, more elements will give you more accurate results. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason. So for here, uh, I think you, know, you mentioned that your, your relative error is just 0, 0, 0.5 something. Up. And uh, you know, that's once you compare with the public uh, uh, pu published uh, results, yeah. and uh, 
uh, if now say if you use the different commercial device to compare, you should be careful, especially for the uh, dynamic analysis. The main reason is when they analyze the eigenvalue problems, uh, behind of that, now one is the, the, the matrix size, another one is the method they use you know, to guide the eigenvalue yeah. and the eigenvector. Yeah. 